Freaking right here at the Freakers Ball live on this Friday night, August 14, 2020. Uh, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Yep, we're, uh, like I said, live on reallibertymedia.com on the Freakers Ball show page or on vaughn.live slash reallibertymedia. Those are where you get the video feed. If you're on the audio feed, you can get it at RL, rlmradio.xyz or various other places. So welcome to all the folks out there who uh, may be tuned in at this point in time, or those of you listening on the podcast later on. <laughs> come on over here, if you're listening live, come on over here uh, to the uh, reallibertymedia.com, jump on into the chat. You can do that on rlmradio.xyz as well. Jump on into the chat. we got a nice group of folk here. We always do. Good people hanging out, going to be freaking with us for the next three hours. And uh, we're just going to have a good old time, or try to anyway, as best a time as possible in the crazy world that we have today. But uh, yeah, I see people in here chatting today, this, this evening. I see Donna, Donna Van Meter, Dan Van Meter. I miss Mr. Cowboy Tech, Rob Works, Chloe, the Moose Girl, of course, of course, and myself. Um, I, I see Kate's out there somewhere. Uh, probably I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw Hanso, a.k.a. J. Dredd, uh, uh, chatting a little bit earlier, and Zipix and uh, Matt WJ, and and uh, who, who else we all got chatting up in here? We got uh, various people, uh, Java Java Doctor, Meister Moosterbrow, oh, just just a just a crowd, you know, just a crowd. And uh, so so Asmo, hey Asmo, he's been hanging out with us a bit lately. I mean, he's always here, but talking, he's actually been talking in the chat, which is interesting and new and different and cool. <laughs> Have Asmo talking with us. There he comes and goes, comes and goes. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. All those people. I mentioned Rob, right? Yeah, I think I. Yeah, if, if I said it two minutes ago, I've already forgotten it. Anyway, <laughs> maybe a minute. It, it's it's kind of a short term. Uh, Moose girl should, uh, I say, should be calling in shortly. She's uh, in the midst of a storm there at her home in uh in the central wisconsin uh so uh, hopefully everything hangs out and works and uh, she she can call in and uh and, and everything works proper that is my desire and hope for this evening uh so anyway how's everybody doing out there uh you, you're surviving the uh, various tyrannical impositions upon your lives uh i i don't know if, how other places uh what they're doing but here in uh uh, in the tyrannical state of New Mexico, yeah, they uh, they're not being very kind to the people here. Um, they they they're doing they they're they're being they're being what you would expect from a tyrant, you know. Uh, that, that that's what I have to say about that. They are being uh, the uh, the as you would expect uh, some little dictator to uh, given all kinds of sudden new powers that. Uh, I, Given, I don't know who by, uh, apparently it was always there and never used. I don't know, but uh, if somebody was to be using this and there uh, wasn't a fear-based excuse for them to be using it, I would assume they'd be run out of run out of town or or hung from a tree or something like that. But yeah, we we got we got this terrible person running New Mexico. Uh, Michelle Lujan Grisham is her name or the notorious MLG, as we like to refer to her here. <laughs> and she is terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah, yeah, she, she's, uh, anyway. So, I, I, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll leave your governors, I'm sure, regardless of uh, what political stripe they pretend to hang on to, are terrible in their own personal ways. Uh, and then and they spread that out amongst y'all. So, uh, hey, Ben, why? How you doing? I, I see you there. Um, I haven't seen Moose saying anything in the chat, so I, I don't know if she's going to call or what. Uh, I don't know. Um, anyway, what's going on on Real Liberty Me? Oh, earlier this week. <laughs> earlier, not that this interests anybody other than me, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. Earlier this week, uh, uh, WordPress, the, 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 the back, the base, uh, for, um, 
the, the site, the reallibertymedia.com website, um, uh, is WordPress. And, and they updated uh, uh, to a new version, 5.5, just came out this week. And uh, so the uh, theme that, that I use, uh, I use themes that lay on top of WordPress and do various things, uh, you know, for, for the layout, the look, all that stuff. Um, anyway, I found that once I, I made, after I had done that update, and I made a new post, all of the sidebar was gone. And I was, uh, didn't want that to happen. <laughs> For, because it was going to cause me a lot of work. Uh, it was going to cause me a lot of work if if I had to do something different. Uh, anyway, so I sent an email off to the developer of the theme, and I started uh, checking out some other themes, and I actually found a pretty nice one uh, that I could use. Uh, but either way, it was going to cause me a lot of work, and I didn't want that. Uh, so I was uh, resisting as best as I can. My 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 habit of uh oh something's not working. I have to fix this because it's my thing. Which uh, I, I I did look through the the various code and such to see where the issues might be. But uh, I like I said, I already sent the email off to the developer of the theme, and they got back to me the next morning and got back to everybody, I guess, everybody using that particular theme, that developer makes a whole bunch of different ones, but this particular theme, anyway, I don't know how they handled the rest of them, but uh, they, they they fixed the bugs overnight and sent them to me in the morning, saved me a lot of trouble, and I am very grateful to those folk, so um, hooray for that, but in the meantime, as I was saying, I have a, another... Uh, backup plan in case something ever does go wrong with this one or if i just want to change the look because like i said i do like the look of this other one but uh and anyway um so i don't know uh what, what's going on with moose if she's going to call in or what but uh <laughs> governor evers oh that's the uh wisconsin governor governor evers Oh, yeah, I'm sure he keeps you really safe, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> I messed up a little bit there on my uh, recording. <laughs> I hope it all comes out all right in the end. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I let the recording just keep on running during that set. I did not want to do that. Anyway, hopefully I got it all right. Anyway, that last song there, that was Samantha Fish, Kill or Be Kind, before that Beth Hart, Bad Woman Blues. Oh, two of my favorite blues women there, Samantha Fish and Beth Hart. Yeah, it's just awesome, awesome stuff. And we kicked it off with the Mason Rack Band doing a Baby Please Don't Go and uh, a few other songs, or uh, portions of songs, uh, mixed in along the way. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy, I don't know how I did that, but, uh, yeah, I let that recording run, and, well, hopefully I'll, I'll have to check it after the show before I post it up, <laughs> because that, that, was, that, was, that, was a, that was a lot of minutes of music that I did not want on my recording. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? Yes. Hello. Hey, there you go. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing. Hanging in there. <laughs> that was weird. I got a uh, a little thing popped up there uh, when, when I answered the uh, wire. I guess it's a new version. Yeah. It must be a new version of wire. It said, do you want to allow access to this application? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yes. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, weird, weird, weird stuff. Weird stuff. Yep. So, anyway, how you doing? I'm hanging in there. That's good. How's that How's that storm treating you? No, oh, it's going through. It's not that bad. Yeah. It's just uh, rain and a little bit of thunder, a little bit of lightning. Oh, all right, all right. It, it must have died down on its way here. Well, that's good. Yeah, but it's 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 going pretty good out there, though. Yeah, cool. But not where the si the sirens haven't gone off or anything, so yeah. I think it's okay. All right, all right. I think it's okay. Well, that's good to know. 
right. Yeah. Everything working right here? Uh, shoot. What? I just want to see if I saved a certain link. Ah. Uh, I don't know. I'll look for it. Anyway, um. Okay. I was just going to, um. Just talk about New York City for a second. All right. Let's talk about it. Um. I read an article the other day that was basically New York City is dead. Um, and it's not surprising. Like, there's nothing going on there right now. Like, no Broadway shows, no sports, no concerts, no restaurants are open. Um, and it's being overrun. The drug addicts are, like, overrunning the city now and the homeless people. Not that that's a bad thing. I'm not saying, I'm not judging them for being homeless or being a drug addict. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying this is happening there because of all this shit that's going on. Yeah, well, you got, uh, you got, you got like the, the, the mega liberals running the whole place, you know. Um, you, you got uh, Cuomo and then, uh, who's the, uh, Bloomberg? No, he's not still the guy. Who's, who's the guy out no, there? No, uh, yeah, the, the other. governor Newsom? No, no Newsom. Oh, that's already. I'm thinking L.A. Because I was going to say it's happening in L.A. too. Yeah, it's happening it's in L.A. too. Not just New York. It's pretty much every major city right yeah. now. Yeah, all, all, all at least all the major liberal run cities. Um, the, the more the more uh, conservative cities um, don't really let that stuff go on. No, I mean part of it. Well, I know why the city is being like. Certain parts that didn't have those type of people, the homeless people and the drug addicts or whatever, whatever your situation is, um, they weren't in, like, Manhattan. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were in other parts of the city, but not in Manhattan. Oh, but speaking of Manhattan, I don't have the story here, but uh, Manhattan is hurting big time. Uh, they, they are, I think they're... Uh, Rentals, you know, which are really, really crazily expensive, and and their home sales, yeah, are down like forty percent, right? Which is it, yeah. huge, and and I, I don't know, I don't know how they they can't survive without that that income, you know, um, <laughs> so, right? Yeah, it's just, I mean. It, it, it it's just amazing what's going on though it is like it's 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 unprecedented precedented um well all this stuff all this crazy shit going on is unprecedented you know yeah uh, there's no way there there should never ever have been a lockdown and a closing of businesses this should never have happened it's, no it's total insanity uh, yeah. Well, it is from the perspective of anybody looking at it from the outside, like all of us. But I'm sure that those on the inside of this all have a <laughs> they have a master plan. This is this is all part of it, uh, destroying destroying the economy of the world, uh, and, yep. and and destroying individualism, uh, de 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 destroying. Any any opposition to their agenda, anybody that mentions anything that's outside their agenda gets immediately creamed. Uh, right. Uh, so uh, from our from everybody else, all all the us normal people, for, for lack of a better word, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, we, all we see is they're they're destroying everything. What what's wrong with these people? What's going on here? This just can't be right. Uh, but they have a plan. Uh, yeah. Believe you me, they have a plan. And, oh, oh, yeah. And and, and uh, well, I, it's hard to it's hard to tell what what that is gonna be yet. But uh, I mean, it, it definitely looks like a, a global tyrannical situation going on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <sighs> I guess we'll see as time goes on. I I, I don't know. I right. Mean, uh, you know, you got all the Americans up in arms over, oh, it's going to be Trump or it's going to be Biden. It's like, it doesn't matter. It don't matter. Uh, uh, who cares who it is? <laughs> who, cares, who cares if they put a pet rock in there? 
Well, a lot of people do, Grim. Uh, well, it's, yeah, I know they do, but 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 that's the distraction. That's the bread and circuses. That, that's that's uh, that that's part of the whole scheme, you know. And, and yep. they they've been practicing at this for thousands of years, and uh, so yeah. Yeah, so I, you know, um, but anyway, on the overall global kind of situation, we'll have to see. Um, like I said, I, I think they're gonna they're gonna, uh, you know, have have Trump start some kind of a, a war via false flag, you know, something on in America will be bombed, and he'll say we got to bomb them, and before the election. Um, oh, you think that? You think before? Oh hell yeah, it's got to be before. Uh, I mean, if it's not before, he can't use it. Uh, he, oh, okay. He can't use it at his lever as his leverage and fear. Oh, this is much bigger than than Corona. Well, these guys are going to nuke us or whatever. You know, look at they already bombed whatever city, and uh, so uh, and you know, it'd most likely be New York again because I don't know why, but they just love doing stuff over there and making it seem feel like oh, this is America City, uh, right? You know, like like hell it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, I think that that's Kevin. Kind of, remember, I said I mentioned last week the wag the dog situation. Yep. So, yes, you uh, did. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think I think it's coming and it's coming quickly, coming soon. Um, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. It certainly would not be the first time. <laughs> so I mean, we saw it in Vietnam. We saw, yeah. You know, uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, although that never developed into something, right? Um, uh, we saw, we saw it. Oh, Pearl, yeah. we saw it. We saw it at Pearl Harbor. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, they, they. It's not that uh, the Americans told the Japanese to come and bomb them, but they pushed them into it. They prompted yeah. them towards it, and they knew they were coming, and they and they stood down just like they did on nine eleven, uh, j- just to make sure that. All those those ships got bombed the hell out of, so that they right. could so they could get their asses into World War Two, um, and and have the backing of the people. Uh, yeah, they knew about it. Too oh yeah, ahead of oh time. yeah. So uh, and and I I don't know the exact situation in World War One, but it's probably the same thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, they, it's, it's people don't believe it though, Graham. They don't want to believe history. They want to believe what the mainstream me- their their mainstream media of choice tells well, them. Yeah, what they learned in in school in their history books. Oh, that's yeah. right, the Lusitania, Rob. Thanks. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's all it's all you know. It, it's all a scam. It's all rigged. Yeah, I, I got that. Uh, World War One was the the Lusitania. Lusitania, yeah. Oh, false flag. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, uh, my God. So, anyway, be prepared, you know, for something, something like that yep. coming up. And, uh, you know, during this lockdown, scam, pandemic yep. kind of crap. <sighs> yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> and and, I, and I, I would expect if, if uh, the situation furthers out where you get... Uh, you know, like mass, I mean, I'm not talking about Black Lives Matter style rioting, but mass rioting in the street. Mm-hmm. Be, be, be prepared for uh, the Internet to come down um, because that's the only way they're going to be able to prevent people from organizing uh, these situations. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, well, yeah, fuck. And I, oh, hope no, I hope none of this stuff happens, but... Uh, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. <laughs> yeah. All right. What do you got there? The coronavirus. Anyway, there's a map of oh, okay. the uh, homeless people in Manhattan. Let's take and they're trying to do something. They've moved these thirteen thousand. They've moved thirteen thousand homeless people into hotels across the city to stop COVID nineteen outbreaks in shelters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Anyway, it's it's. This is not just New York, like I said. This is L.A., this is Minneapolis, this is every major city in this country is going through the same type of thing. You, in generally, depending on the mayor or the governor, it's how they're responding to it, I guess. Right, yeah. But, they, um, want, they want that further separation. Yeah, the storm is getting bad now. Yeah. Not too bad. It's just a thunderstorm, but... Um, 
you know, they don't know what to do with all these people, these homeless people. I mean, I was watching a video of some guy who was in L.A. on Skid Row, filming Skid Row, just walking through it, you know, and it um, it was unreal. I I was like, wow. I I can't imagine being in that situation um, at all, living in a tent on the street, like on the sidewalk somewhere. Right, right. You know, I mean, I could do it. I could survive. Don't you know what I mean? But it would not be pleasant. It would not be. No, it would not be pleasant at all. Yeah. Yeah, and I just I'm getting so I'm already tired of the politics shit. Oh. With all of, with this whole election thing, it's just like it. People are so divided, and it's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been having to deal with this crap for a long ass time. Um, yep. Uh, you know. And uh, it's just, I, I, yeah. Okay, people. I get it. You like to spew about your political affiliation. I get it. You get to speed up. You know, spout off about this, that, and the other thing. You know, um, but really on Facebook, I'm that's I'm I'm more sick of it on Facebook than anywhere else. It's like I know where most of my friends stand. I don't need them to be forcing their shit down my throat. You know what I mean? Right, right. So I just stay out of it. I don't comment or anything. You know. Yeah, um, I, you know, let them. But it's this is getting out of control. The social media shit, it, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. And well, I well, agree, Rob. Well, Probably well, not as as they want us to think. Let me let me say this about the social media thing. Okay, primarily, you know, mm-hmm. I, I'm on Minds and I'm on Rillery dot org, but those are small and minor things. But mm-hmm. I'm on, but I'm also on Twitter. Yeah, and I, and I have a thing that comes to me every Friday, and it tells me how many new people followed me or new people or people that quit following me. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so I get the thing this morning, and, yeah. and, and by the way, most of the people I follow are, are uh, anarchists, anarcho-capitalists, and, right. and and some are just straight conservatives, um, which I read for. Whatever, various purposes. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, so I get the thing this morning. Uh, eight, eight people had stopped following me this week. And, and I, you pop up a thing and it shows you who the people are. Mm-hmm. Well, every one of those eight people, and, 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 and if this is the case, they don't show you who they are. It just okay. says, account banned or terminated. <laughs> okay. So, so eight people that I follow, and that, that <laughs> and I get every week it's like that because uh, I'll get like four people unfollowed you, and you look at, yeah. and they they didn't unfollow me. They they <laughs> Twitter banned all these people that I follow. They get banned off of the. Oh, Twitter. I see. Okay. Yeah, because they you know they they're talking about their views or opinions and right. And they're right. Just, you know they're saying things about. Whatever, uh, vaccine nonsense or hydrochloroquine crap or Corona yeah. being nonsense or uh, or whatever, um, uh, various things like that, uh, and and they'll and, and and Twitter will ban your ass, which I don't know right. how I've never yeah. been banned because I say that crap all the time, but yeah. <laughs> and I'm not shy about it either, um, <laughs> so 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 uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, the social media stuff. Um, they're they're as controlled as the as the mainstream media, the clap, of course, um, and and uh, you know they they all want you to believe in socialism, and that socialism is good and it's the right way to go. Uh, although of course when when it actually rolls in, uh, when full on socialism gets here, which may be very soon, we don't know, um, it's not going to be good for you people that think socialism is going to be good for you. It, it, right. is gonna, it is going to be horrible. And <laughs> and you're thinking, well, they're going to give me this free health care, and they're going to give me, you know, free, yeah, right. free, free, free monthly income. They're going to do all this. No, they aren't. No, they aren't. Oh. Uh, and, and, and if they do give you free health care, it, it'll be like, like it is in other socialist uh, countries that have free health care, where you've got to wait like six months to, to see the worst doctor in the world. Uh, and and 
it, it just just look at some of just look at some of those countries that uh, that I'm talking about. Canada being one of them, uh, mm -hmm. and of course, lots of places over in Europe are that way. And it's not good. It is not good for them. Uh, and and as far as the uh, uh, what do they call it, the minimum monthly income or some kind of crap like that. Yeah. Basic basic so, basic income. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, the countries that have implemented that have gotten rid of it because it was bankrupting their asses because there's no way to do it. Uh, there's no way to do it uh, and and maintain any kind of ec economy within those countries at all. So, uh, and whatever else. I, I mean, uh, all, all of the things that you think socialism is going to bring you, well, it, it's going to bring you some stuff, but you're not going to like it. So, No. Anyway, that's my little socialism rant. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anti socialism. Right. Uh, not that we've had capitalism, because we certainly have not had capitalism. No, we have uh, not. Uh, not. Not in the, not in the true sense of the not word. Not in the true sense of it. Yeah, right. So, um, but, uh, we've had corporatism. Corporatism, right, which is fascism. Um, yes. But, you, guys, uh, you guys don't realize that? I mean... <laughs> I, I don't know who really. I, I don't know. I don't understand where people get their information and, and their beliefs when most of the time they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's like you, you don't even know what you're fucking talking about. You don't even know what the you, you trust other people to give you your information. You don't do any research on your own whatsoever. It's like what I don't get that. I don't understand uh, that. Just just do some basic math and you can figure it out real quick. Because uh, the numbers, the, the numbers just don't add up. What stops people from seeing? What stops them, Grim? What stops them? I, that's what I want to know. What's, what what stops a person from researching and educating themselves? <laughs> I don't well, understand that. Well, what, it's, it's easier just to believe some idiot on TV, I guess. I don't know. Um, okay. I, I, so I, it's laziness, basically. Or that maybe they trust these people. I I I don't know. I, How could you? How? I, well, I, most people do. I mean, I like, know. just uh, just talk to you, just talk to your your mother or your stepmother. Yeah. Uh, no, that's all right. <laughs> and, and any people like that? Uh, at, look at just, just listen to your kids. You've been telling your kids all along, yeah. and, and they still buy it. They still believe it. Uh, well. And, 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 I don't know. And you and you had eighteen. I don't know where they are at. You had eight, you had eighteen years, eighteen years to pound the idea into their head, uh, right? And, and it, it it doesn't take because uh, it's, it's it's more difficult with family, of course. Um, yeah. Uh, than, than it is with your with your average people, um, but uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know what gets people. Um, from there to here, it's like free and slave. Free and slave has been with us all along, all the mm -hmm. way back to 2008 or whenever. Yeah. Um, and and he's still hanging on to the minarchist uh, idea, which um, realistically yeah, it would be better than than what what we have. But it, it never stays. It doesn't stick. You can't have you can't have a, a, a minimal government because it just grows. It grows and grows. Right. Right. And, and, it, and it grows like it's on steroids, or I don't know, if the steroids yeah. make it grow. Um, <laughs> but 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 uh, I mean, it, it's insanity. So uh, uh, yeah, I. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, maybe this will help. I this uh, story okay. I have here, because um, and I and I saw this the other day over on the Twitter, and it said. Uh, the guy put up there, whoever had zombies uh, for 2020 uh, on your 2020 bingo card, check it off now. <laughs> because we have it. We have it. <laughs> on BigSync.com, Yale scientists restore cellular function in 32 dead pig brains. <laughs> They they have reanimated 32 dead pig brains. Uh, uh, researchers hope the technology will further our understanding of the brain, but lawmakers may not be ready for the ethical challenges. Now, anybody that's been a zombie movie 
fan for a long time, mm-hmm. understands that a lot of the times the cause of the zombie outbreak was scientists doing research on reanimating dead tissue. Yeah. Um, uh, brain brain function. Um, and so, anyway, so here we have it. Researchers at Yale School of Medicine successfully restored some functions to the pig brains that have been dead for hours. They hope the technology will advance our understanding of the brain, potentially developing new treatments for dis- debilitating diseases and disorders. The research raises many ethical questions, I would say. So, um... <laughs> And, and puts to test our current understanding of death, meaning, well, just because they're dead doesn't mean they're really dead. It only means that 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 their their brain is kind of not working. Uh, so we will uh, reanimate them, and well, now I don't know if uh, pigs have souls or not, or if you believe humans have souls or some other kind of life force, whatever you want to call it. But uh, that leaves. When you die, that leaves. It's gone. It's away from you. Yeah. So if they reanimate you and and you become alive, uh, uh, undead, I should say, <laughs> whatever comes back doesn't have that little governor in your head saying, this is what's right and this is what's wrong. It doesn't. So... Uh, it, it, so I, I don't know that you're going to go out there and eat brains, but you are not <laughs> going to be a good person. You are not. Uh, you you are going to be, I don't want to say evil, because you wouldn't think you're evil if you don't know right from wrong, right? Um, <laughs> it says the image of an undead brain coming back to life again is the stuff of science fiction. Or maybe not. Uh, not just <laughs> not just any science fiction. Specifically, B grade sci fi. What instantly springs to mind is the black and white horror films like Fiend Without a Face. Bad acting, plastic monstrosities, visible strings, and a spinal cord. For some reason, that is also a tentacle. But like, uh, but like any good sci fi, it's only a matter of time before some manner of it seeps into our reality. This week's Nature, the magazine Nature, or the website nature.com, published the findings of the researchers who managed to restore the function to the pig's brains that were clinically dead. At least, that's what we once thought of as dead. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Uh, What is dead may never die. (laughs) Anyway, it's it's a fun article to read, and I'm going to give you the uh, link here, but I'll also... I'll also put it into the uh, the blog for y'all. Anybody that doesn't want to read it tonight, just check the blog tomorrow afternoon, and uh, and you'll see. Um, it's some freaky stuff. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. <laughs> wow. Uh, I just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you may have heard of this other this next story. You may have heard this <laughs> earlier earlier today. Um, okay. Or not, I posted it in the chat there, but whatever. Um, so the the state of Mississippi, you know the state of Mississippi, they decided to change their flag because it had the uh, Confederate uh, battle flag on there as, okay. as part of it. It was like a, a quarter of the flag had the Confederate battle flag on there. So mm-hmm. Mississippi, bowing the pressure uh, of, you know, the, the loonies out there that, oh, that flag offends me. Yeah, all flags offend me because they they represent state, they represent yeah. government. So, so all flags are offensive to me. But but th- this particular flag, uh, wh- whatever. Uh, I mean, I have no problem with the Confederate flag or this flag in Mississippi or uh, the Dukes of Hazard on top of their car or Leonard Skinner or any of the other places. Uh, uh, people that that use that flag, whatever. It, they're not there to be racist. They're there because that's where they grew up. That, that's 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 their their heritage. Uh, it's it's part of who they are. Um, and and uh, I guarantee you, the folks in Leonard Skinner are not racist. I don't, I never saw the Dukes of Hazard, but I don't imagine it was a racist show because they wouldn't have been on television if it were. Um, <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> so Mississippi, they put this thing out down there in Mississippi, yeah. uh, a public request to, to to share with them 
uh, your ideas of what you thought the new flag for Mississippi should ought to look like. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody, somebody. Can only imagine. Uh, well, well, somebody put up, and, and I thought it was very fitting, actually, uh, a, a picture of this big yellow mosquito. Uh, or, I mean, a, a, big, a, a big mosquito on like a yellow. A viral design being proposed as the new state flag would, for Mississippi. Would, <laughs> shut, shut that thing up. Um, so, uh, so, 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 so that's like the and, and it went viral. So that's like the leading the leading new flag concept for Mississippi. Of course, they're not going to use that. Uh, but <laughs> I saw it. I, 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 they're, oh they're blaming a typo. Uh, uh, so in something that they did uh, in in their request for for a public comment on how their new flag should be, and and they have a lot of freaking mosquitoes down there in Mississippi, and they're big. Um, oh, I'm sure. So, <laughs> the bayou. Yeah. <laughs> so it says the viral design being proposed as a new state flag for Mississippi originated as a joke and it was only included in a list of finalists due to a typo. Uh, the Mississippi Department of Archives and History, the MDAH, is currently narrowing down the options to replace the current flag as lawmakers voted to remove the Confederate battle flag from its current version. The MDAH recently revealed its finalists after accepting over a thousand submissions for possible flag redesigns. In an Internet age situation reminiscent of the Bodie McBoatface naming, one of the, if you remember that, that was funny too, uh, one of the finalists that quickly drew viral attention was uh, and support was a joke flag that featured a giant mosquito at the center. <laughs> Bite you, he'd carry you away. <laughs> he'd drain your ass. Anyway, I, I, thought, I just got a kick out of it, so I thought I'd share <laughs> oh man <laughs> so the mississippi mosquito flag i can, I, can I, I i would really like to see that but of course they're not going to do it so <laughs> you still there you with me oh yeah i'm here sorry oh okay that's all right. I'm muted i don't think they're going to do that one no yeah probably not <laughs> it would be funny. Oh, it'd be it'd be great. That they'd be that that'd be the best flag ever. Um Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh man. All right. So now, yeah. now, now we we've heard in the past how like the pow pow, which is a fruit, and I think yeah. a goat a goat or something like that, um, had tested positive for corona. Something like that. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Okay, you don't remember that story, but a yeah. mango or something. It was a fruit. A man. I, I, it was mango. a paw, pawpaw. It was called a pawpaw. Oh, okay. Okay, and it was it was it's some kind of I think it's Brazilian. I'm not sure exactly where it's from. It might be Indonesian. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, okay. It was a fruit. It was a piece of fruit, and it tested mm -hmm. positive for coronavirus. And they also right. got it tested a goat and got that from the goat. Well, now. <laughs> On WGNTV.com, Chinese officials say chicken wings from Brazil tested positive for corona. <laughs> chicken wings. Not, not, oh my God. Not, not live chickens. No, oh no. My God. Packaged, frozen chicken wings. So, so <laughs> some chicken wings imported from Brazil have tested positive for corona in China. Uh, Chinese officials say, said in a statement that the virus was detected Wednesday on the surface <laughs> Uh, sample of imported frozen chicken wings. The testing comes from the Chinese city of Shenzhen. Uh, now, I, I, are, are they testing all foods for, I don't know. for corona? I, 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 <laughs> so people who may have come in contact with contaminated food were immediately tested, and all were shown to be negative, according to the statement from the Shenzhen Epidemic Prevention and Control Headquarters. Uh, the headquarters office reminded the general public to be cautious in buying imported frozen meats uh, and aquatic products in the near future and to take personal protection re uh, to reduce the risk of contracting the new corona. Uh, new? Is there a new one? Uh, anyway. Anyway, oh. anyway, so um, I guess it doesn't matter what it is. It can have the uh, corona. Corona bologna. Check your yeah. bologna. Check your bologna for corona. <laughs> so they're not really enforcing the mask thing, even though they say it 
on the door that you have to wear one. The door of what? All the stores that are requiring a mask. Well, oh. Governor Evers said that everyone should be wearing a mask or something. Is it Evers or Evers? Evers. Okay. It's spelled anyway, right. um, yeah, it's spelled like Evers, but it's Evers. Anyway, um, so I'm at the a thrift store uh-huh. yesterday, right. I believe, and this guy comes in with all the mask on. All right. And the lady at the door, and, you know, they have the lady, like, greeting people and cleaning carts and all that type, type of thing, right? Uh-huh. And she's like, do you have a mask? He's like, no, I don't use one. And I don't know exactly. I was standing kind of close by, but not really close enough where I could really hear, you know? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I don't know what they said to each other, but he's walking in the store. I'm like, okay, well, I guess they're not really enforcing it, you know? Yeah. And then, like, at the convenience store, if you go there, like, half the people getting stuff are wearing masks. Half the people come in without them. Yeah. It's supposed to be, like, a statewide mandate. Right. Well, see, the thing here, what what, what our fascist governor did, uh, was said that any business that does not enforce masks on all customers will be fined. And it's some huge fine, too. It's not like a nominal thing. It's like oh. $5,000 a day or something. I of... haven't heard that here. Yeah, well, it's probably not. It it's, it's, it's probably not. It's probably something our governor came up with on her own because um, I haven't heard about it anywhere else. But um, So if I'm going to shop at a local store, a local independent private store, um, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll put it on just to go into the store and take it off as soon as I leave because I, I'm not, I don't want to make these businesses pay money for for me. I mean, right, I, I, right. I mean, that's, that, that's just no. fucking, that's rude. Yeah, <laughs> that's, right, that's, yeah. That's messed up. So uh, I've, I've only used it twice, once at the grocery store, and then I had to go to the uh, hardware store yesterday, and so I put it on when I walked in there. Um, uh, you know, it's stupid. It sucks, um, doesn't it? And it, it's useless. They're useless. Stupid. It's so uh, dumb. They're, they're so useless. And by the way, Hansel, yeah. just just so you you know, and, and I may get one of the ones like you got, Hans, just because of the fact that those neck gaiters, if you're familiar with those, our neck gaiter is. Yep. It's a thing yep. that goes around your neck, and, it, and then you can just pull it up over your face. It up and right. it, yeah. Those apparently spread three times more droplets, whatever that means, <laughs> than not wearing a mask at all. So I'm thinking right. that that's a great idea. I should get one of those and spread my droplets about <laughs> because it, it counts. It qualifies un, under the under the ruling, you know, face covering. So, um, right. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna be like Hans, be like Hans, and uh, oh, wow. uh, wear wear a neck gaiter. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh yeah, the, the uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 McAfee. Yeah, John McAfee. Uh, yeah, that was funny. I forget, I forget what how, what what uh, airport he was in. Some airport, and uh, and and they told him to put a mask on, so he put on his like his wife's G string or something over his face. Yeah. <laughs> and they said, "Oh, you can't wear that." And he said, "Yes, I can." And then and he said, right. well, "Put something else. Well, I don't have something else." Oh, and he said, I'm not going to put your mask on if you give it to me. Anyway, so he, he got arrested and fined or whatever, and he just made a joke about it, which is yeah. which is funny. I mean, <laughs> I, like, I like John. He, he's so he, he's, he's such a screwball, you know, but uh, yeah. uh, and, you know, he, he, so if you follow him on Twitter, you'll see his little, he puts up a little video every now and then. Yeah, he got okay. punched, in, punched in the eye. Yeah. Oh, Norway. Thank you, Ben. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I, I just thought it was funny. Anyway, we're going to play some more music now. All right. And uh, hopefully I'll get this muted. Sounds um, good. Uh, Here is the uh, link for that if anyone wants to look at it. Which one? The John McAfee. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, okay. there it is. Thanks. I'll, I'll put that it's in. It's like a lacy thought. It, does, it looks like a face covering to me. I don't see what the problem is. No, I mean, no, on. no, it's no, great. come on. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's true. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't see a problem with that. Oh, New York Post says it was a hoax. Oh, well, 
I can look it up again and get you a different. Oh no, from that it. link, I, I clicked the link from from that link that you gave me. Yeah. Which which is on the New York Post, and and it's, it's, oh, okay. Well, there's another story here. Yeah. So from Zero Hedge. Oh okay okay. Um, I'll post that one. All right. So either way, I, I he's he, he's a kick. Uh, yeah, he's man. funny. He's yeah. got, you know, he's outspoken and he doesn't give a shit, you know. Yeah. Okay, this says it was in Germany. Whatever, doesn't okay. matter. I don't. It was hey. Germany. I don't know. Who Germ- knows? It Germ- doesn't matter. Germany, Norway, Sweden. It's all the same. Right. Yeah. Circle. <laughs> I just said that to tweak circle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'll appreciate. That. Denmark. What's the difference? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's not going to like that comment. <laughs> yeah, you better look out now, Grimir. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, anyway, this is a, they say it's a hoax. I didn't read it, but. Yeah, um, it's, it, it, I don't know. <laughs> I'm following him now on Twitter, so it's That's all good. good now. That's good. That's good. Yeah. All right. Okay, we're going to play music here. Um, all right. And uh, we'll be back in a little shortly, a little while. We will. We will. This is uh, The Dreadful Grape. I mean, uh, somebody like that. Marachioli there, uh, doing Johnny B. Good as a, a tribute uh, to Chuck Berry when he died back in 2017. Uh, yeah, so that was uh, March two, 2017 when that video came out. Before that was uh, Carlos Santana and Everlast, a cowboy tech request there. Put your lights on from the Supernatural Live DVD. And we kicked it off with the Boost Girl request. The Grateful Dead, not the Dreadful Grape. The Grateful Dead doing me and Bobby McGee. Off of the uh, Gre- the Skull and Roses album, 1971. Oh, a few years back now, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, good, good tune, good tunages, tunages, tunages. Yep. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, if I got one of those self cleaning boxes, I could maybe handle a cat, but. Yeah, yeah, um, maybe, maybe. I mean, cats are cool. They're smart, dude. I, they're, I've met a lot of cool cats in my life, and I, I have no. It's not that I don't like them. I love cats. They're great, but I just don't have one as a pet. Yeah, I, I have no problem with with cats at all. Um, uh, they're they're fine animals, but I, I don't want to be scooping their crap out either. So. Yeah, that's the part that I don't I don't care for. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they're cool. You know, some people are cat people, some people are dog people, some people are both, you know? Yeah, no, I, I love dogs. Uh, my, my friend, uh, Jeannie, uh, she called me today. She, she got that oh, dog. Okay. She got that dog, Cooper. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah, what yeah. kind of breed is it again? It's a mutt. She, she oh, had a mutt, she, okay, yeah. She, she had a DNA tested, uh, and it's got like eight different breeds in it. <laughs> Oh but, wow! <laughs> uh, you know, they're, they're I hope that didn't cost a lot of money. <laughs> I, they don't care. They got money. Um, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, she she listed them off, and, and there's a little bit of pit bull. There's some German Shepherd. There's some mm-hmm. uh, I, I, Yorkshire Terrier. There's uh, about, what's those Chow 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 Chow? Uh, some some of that in there. Um, okay. I, I don't know. Like I said, there's like eight different breeds. It, it's a it's a true mutt. Um, but it's a really cool looking dog. Um, mm-hmm. so, cool. uh, yeah. And she, she's so happy now that she got it, you know, after she lost her last dog. Um, yeah, that's so, hard. Uh, yeah. And, and you know, so, uh, yeah, and she, and she's a, she's a big dog lover, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, good. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, there's pros and cons for both animals. Like cats, you can leave them alone for a couple of days. Right. You know, and, um, oh, wow. Oh, no. What? Um, 
there was a there was an incident in my neighborhood, like a couple blocks over and north of me, a couple blocks, and I saw a the rescue squad was there, and it looked to appear to be firemen that were there, but I'm sure there was a couple cops there. But now I found out what it was. It was a dog that a two year old in the face and a grandpa pulled a knife out. <laughs> Okay. So there was an incident with a dog um, biting a child, which is not cool. Um, but really? <laughs> yeah. so I was just wondering what it was that was going on over there, because you know me. I'm like, what the hell's going on over there? <laughs> I, I didn't. I, I just drove by. I didn't I drive by that directly. I was, I was on a side street, right? You know what I mean? Right, right. All the neighbors were out. I'm like, something's going on here. Something ain't right. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, it's just uh, there's a lot of stuff going, weird stuff going on everywhere lately. This year is just crazy. Like, you know what I mean? This just so much weird stuff is going on. Yeah. Lately, I don't know how to explain it. Well, everyone obviously there's shit going on. Like this, this isn't normal shit, right? Right. We're you know, um, but just. People are losing it, I think. Yeah. I think mentally they're losing it. They they don't like this. You know, I think some people at first were like, oh, if they believe that about the virus thing, they're like, okay, well, we'll just do it for a, like when they like you said, you know, recently or we've been talking since this started, but they keep extending it. Right. And they, they, you know what I mean? And that's well, they, how they, they get us to accept that. That's how they get a lot of people to accept it. They, they never you know, had, well, it was 15 days. Well, now it's two months. Well, now it's going to be, you know, it's just like, come on. Right. Now it's been six months, so. Right. It's like, come on, you guys. This is ridiculous now. You know, so you know that there's more to it. Well, it's you bullshit. know that there, it's ramping up, leading into going into something else. Absolutely. If you know history and you know what they're capable of and how they operate, you know that's what's happening here. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, like you said, like just like Vietnam or just like you know, you name any any other big thing in U.S. history. Okay. Right. Right. I mean, the Iraq War. Well, and and Corona itself is also a false flag. It's a false flag being, yeah. being blamed on China. When it was actually developed by the CIA using yep. a, using a Canadian lab, and then the Canadian lab shipped it over to Wuhan, and Wuhan, yeah. and then they then they had the Wuhan people release it into the wild, uh, and uh, people would be like, "Oh no, but that's they, not what happened. No, they, that's not what happened. It is what happened. It's the China <laughs> flu. China, it, it's it's China's fault. <laughs> and yeah, man." No, like, no, what? It's got... no, you guys, we talked about that, Graham. The, the only when the, the, we talked about that on here. Oh, plenty of times, yeah. We did. We talked about the story. The the information is out there, and if you if you don't know who Doctor Fauci is, come on, you, you got to do your research about uh, if if you want to know about him, you got to do research because he's not a nice person. Look at the AIDS, how much money he made off AIDS. And how many people he killed. Yes. He's, a, he's an evil. Insanity, okay. He, he, he's an evil mass murdering scum is yeah. what he is. Yeah. Um, and so is Bill Gates. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, they all are. All all those people up there. Um, they're eugenicists. They're, they want to make a buck. They they act like they care about you, but they don't. They act like they're doing you a favor, and that's what they're, they're doing the opposite. Right. Okay? They're right. doing the opposite of that. They want you to believe their words, not their actions. Okay? But not they don't, they don't want you to believe all their words. They only want you to believe the latest word. Because if they said, yeah. it, if they said it yesterday, it means nothing today if they said something different today. So just because... Of, right. Oh, well, here, this article right here that I have up uh, okay. for you. This article, by the way, you should spread this article around on all your social media crap uh, just to get it out there more and further. Mm -hmm. And make note that this is from March 12th of this year. March 12th of this year. March 12th. Yeah, okay. and, it, and it's posted on the independent, uh, co.uk. Mm -hmm. uh, 
coronavirus. Face masks could increase the risk of infection, medical chief warns. For the average member of the public walking down the street, it is not a good idea. So members of the public could be putting themselves at more risk from contracting or of contracting corona by wearing face masks. One of England's most senior doctors is warned. Jenny Harries, deputy chief medical officer, <laughs> said the mask could actually trap the virus and cause, yeah. cause the person wearing it to breathe it in. For the average member of the public walking down the street, it's not a good idea. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, uh, I have done this, the same thing you have, Grim, where yeah. I've gone into places with the goddamn stupid fucking thing on. Yeah. And I swear to God, it gives me a sore throat. Sure. Yeah, well, it will. Because, I mean, you're, because you're, 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 you're not expelling properly and you're not inhaling properly. You're, you're breathing and your waste. And it's just a piece, a piece of cloth. So it's really, it's not doing any fuck. it's not doing any good. You're, you're breathing in waste, waste product. Yeah. That you're, that you're supposed just, to be expelling. Um, so lately, what I'm going to do now is like at least pull it down under my nose or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's sure. It's so yeah. ridiculous. So, like, you can, so you can at least breathe. Uh, anyway, and the reason I I take take take, take, take that right. take that link and spread that around. Uh, okay. On, on, on I all, mean, it's just like I said, that's in March. Uh, that's in March. And have you heard anything about this woman since then? No. 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 They, no. They, no they, dude. Well, oh no. Th but this was back when when it was kind of getting going, and and well, just like any other doctor out there that's been de debunking this stuff. Hansel. You know, on, the Dr. Bergman, there is, and then there's Dr. Sh um, Sherry Tenpenny. Yeah. And anybody out there debunk, trying or, or, to debunk this stuff and, and make and help you to wake up is being shut down and censored and banned. So what does that tell you? Why would they do that? If, if, if what they said didn't threaten them, why would they shut them down? Why okay? would they? Exactly. Why would they censor and ban shit? Right. It's because they don't want you to think for yourself. They want you to buy what they're saying, hook, line, and sinker. It's a big fucking lie. As usual. Right. This, they didn't all of a sudden stop lying. Okay? okay let, me, let, me, let me make a side. If you think government gives a fuck about you as a person, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I, I, where do you get that idea? Because... They don't. And besides that, government is a thing. It is made up of people that do it, but yeah. government's a thing. Government's not a person. Government has no emotion. Okay. All right. Well, let, let me let me let me make a side <laughs> a total sidebar comment. Nothing to do with this. Okay, you can okay. continue. For those of you in the chat, if you're making a video request, you okay. have to include. The artist and the song name, along with the URL. Now, we've got, yeah, it's before. A, it's a, it's like, a, it's, yeah, go ahead. So just just do that. Otherwise, all I get in my list is a URL, and I don't know what it goes to. I know okay. the system we used to have used to put all that in there for you, but it right. doesn't any longer. So please add the, the artist and song do name the, along. The, the exclamation point request REQ and then a space and then the, the name of the song and the artist and then post the link. Right. Please. Then, then paste the link and then post the request. <laughs> yes. Paste, post. You know what I meant. I, I do. Okay. okay. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Go, go ahead. No, that's okay. It's just they didn't all of a sudden stop lying. Yep. And they don't, it, government's a thing. It, yeah, there's people that do the paperwork or whatever the fuck, but government itself is a thing. It, does, it, it has no feelings. And people put way too much emotion into this stuff, dude. Right. They just really get upset and really emotional. And government really, emotion really doesn't even belong in government, does it? I mean, I, I wouldn't think so. Why would it? I mean, if you're be if you're making decisions about a country, if you're in government, you're making a decision about something that will affect everybody in the country. I hope you're not 
making those decisions based those decisions based on emotion. Right. I hope you're making them based on something solid, <laughs> you know, something, not emotion though. You know, and people put too much emotion into this shit, and they they really go off the deep end, and they they have it, it create it, it creates hatred, and hatred to me is is ridiculous. It, it, but yeah, you know, because they they want it their way so bad yeah. that they 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 turn into hateful people and. Something I'm not going to support something that that could possibly turn me into a hateful person. I'm glad to hear you that. know because I don't feel that I am a hateful person. So I don't. I'm not going to uh, excuse me go hey, down Tom. that road to make me become something that I don't want to be. Good. That's good. I don't want to be like oh well you don't believe the same thing I do so you're a bad person. It's like how stupid is that. Yeah, well, that's this, so narrow-minded. Uh, this this is a story Rob posted earlier in the chat okay. today. Uh, speaking of government and going crazy and nuts and all that kind of shit. Um, yeah, <laughs> which is what they do. That, that's almost right, but it's got to be on the same line, Cowboy Tech. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you, uh, everyone will get used to it. It's yeah, just yeah, yeah. The change. It's no yeah. big deal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here I'm it sorry, is. Sorry, Cowboy Tech. You, you probably are following my instructions, and I probably worded it totally, like, wrong, so <laughs> my bad. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. All right, so here it is. Uh, this is from investmentwatchblog.com. Rob posted this this afternoon in the chat. Police in Australia have gone nuts. Uh, so here it oh, is. Oh, they have. Oh, uh, yes, they have. Police... Australia itself has gone insane. Okay, sure, sorry. sure, sure. Um, so... Uh, police in Melbourne have adopted ruthless tyranny. They have been caught on video attacking a woman because they they do not because uh, she didn't have a mask while walking down the street. Which that previous article, people walking down the street should not be, uh, yeah, uh, doing that. Um, <laughs> police have and the army are entering homes without a warrant if they think you are violating COVID restrictions. They have imposed effectively martial law. They spelt it M A R S H A L. Uh, martial law. <laughs> they Come did. On. Come on, guys. Oh my God. Come on, guys. Who wrote anyway, this? Like, uh, I'm sorry, but that's, uh, that's a huge like. Martin. Full Martin Armstrong. Okay. So. Um, okay. And he, but he only put one L on Marshall. So anyway, yeah, but still, <laughs> dude, know. that's not how you spell right. it. Come so, on. So, so they have imposed effectively martial law, ignoring all human rights, and have enforced an 8 p.m. curfew. Uh, they have destroyed over 40, 400,000 jobs as Melbourne's lockdown is labeled the worst ever breach of Aussie freedoms, and that's bad because they've done a lot of nasty things down there to them already. Yeah. They have imprisoned their people with a complete stay-at-home orders as well. Meanwhile, we may see a revolution emerge in Australia as well as the government has stated that wearing masks may be a permanent change for daily life for years to come. <sighs> Which, it's probably going to be that way here, too. Oh, but they, my they, God. They, they just haven't been up front about Can it Can you here. imagine... So uh, many, many are starting to question if Gates or others have him, are simply bribed politicians to turn against their own people in these dramatic ways. You cannot throw away all the liberty of the people under the pretense of protecting them while brutally attacking people for not having a mask, which I don't know if you saw that, that video, but they were beating the crap out of that I woman. did not, but I, don't uh, really, I probably won't watch it. Just... Well, it's not, it's not in here. Well, it might be linked in here, but, uh, but it's, not, it's not in this post. So obviously, Melbourne will no longer be a place for business travelers or people doing business at all. These restrictions will wipe out their economy for years to come. Um, it, yeah, it, you, you can't you can't do this. You can't you can't. And you know what? The people down there are freaking pissed. Oh well, they should the be. The common people, the common, you know what I mean? And right, and right. The average Joe down there. The commoners. Whatever. You dirty commoners! <laughs> yeah, they're pissed off though. You know what? I wouldn't want a bunch of them, com them Australian commoners pissed off at me, dude. Right, right. Because they're badass. 
They got well, well, they know. don't got guns though. That's the only thing. You know what? Australia gave up their guns, but you want to bet? Do you think all that people gave up their guns? Um, no. No, they hit them or whatever. Well, we 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 well, they we still have guns there. We we know that guy Steve Lee is 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 from Australia. Um, yeah. And he's he's the guy that does that song. I like guns. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It does. So he he he's, he certainly hasn't given up his guns. <laughs> yeah, no. See, so if you guys, I mean, I know everyone likes to say, well, Australia, they all gave up their guns. I'm not sure about that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. I have a feeling that there's plenty of guns available to common people somewhere in Australia. Okay. Yeah. In a field, buried in the fucking dirt. Who know? You know what I mean? Right, right, right. You know what I mean? How are they going to find it? Unless they're using some kind of fucking technology or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. exactly. And going house to house and, start, and digging up people, you know, digging up in places wherever. You know, I just mm. don't see that. Australia, unless you're in the city, it's fucking rural, dude. Oh, yeah. Like, you can't, like, people in the U.S., they're like, oh, it gets hot here. Oh, yeah. You yeah. don't know hot. Yeah, they, they, it's it's hot as hell down there. It's fucking hot down there in the summertime. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of it's like the outback or whatever, right? Oh, or it's desert. Huge, yeah, a huge desert. Huge desert down there. Yeah, yeah desert, all, the outback. I mean, I mean, and of course, it's more temperate on the coast, which is goes all right. around, which goes all around the country or continent, whatever. Because it's call an it. island. Yeah, but uh, but but that's small compared to the size of the whole country. It is. Uh, it's, right. It's a huge country, and they got they got severe deserts down there. They have a lot of desert, and unless you're an aborigine, <laughs> you ain't going to make it. <laughs> no, no, no. You wouldn't make it in the outback or in the desert in Australia. And unless besides. you were with a, an expert guy that knows their shit and is from there as an aborigine. That's the only way you're going to survive <laughs> in Australia if you're stuck out there in the middle of fucking and, nowhere. And besides, it's, ba it's basically just a big penal colony. Right, that's what it started as. That's where the UK, Great Britain, sent the criminals. And, and they, well, still, they, going, they yeah. still have that mentality, so. Yeah, yeah. And, and they did the same in the U.S., right? Right, right. I mean, they sent war criminals over here. They gave Nazi, um, high-up Nazis, Nazis asylum here. Because oh, yeah. they were, their excuse was they were afraid of Russia getting to space first or developing a nuke or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? They were so, right. that was the reasoning behind Operation Paperclip. And that's what it was called. And a lot of people are unaware of this, but it's, look it up. It's, I'm not making this up. Um, the reason they call, I think I talked about this like a couple of weeks ago, but that's okay. They called it Operation Paperclip because they removed all the paperwork that showed they were a Nazi and it left the paperclip mark. Okay. Right. So on the you know so they got rid of their Nazi they, they they acted like they weren't Nazis anymore. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Where did the stream go? It'll be back in a second. Is it working room? It'll, it'll be back in a second. My my uh, thing. Oh, sorry. It's, it's yeah, my, I know it's, that. It's something on anyway, my end, so. um, excuse me. Um, here it comes. Okay, there you go. Werner von Braun. Okay, he started NASA. They brought him over to be in the space program. They wanted that technology that the Germans had. And they brought a bunch of these Nazis over here. Okay? Right. And they gave them, they didn't really give them different names, but they, they hid the fact that they were Nazis. Okay? Right. I mean, they hid it. They hid the fact. Okay? Yeah. And people were like, oh, no. It's like, yeah, they did that. So I don't know what that's, what this, you know what I mean? I don't exactly know. I know what they said the reason was, Grim, but I don't know the real, you know what I mean? The real hey. reason, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I mean, what do you, I mean I could, we, could, we could speculate, but. I, I don't know either, but speaking probably of. Probably the, oh yeah, Ben's right. I think that is part of the reason. They wanted to make the A-bomb, and they wanted that them German oh, scientists yeah. to come over here. Absolutely. Which. I mean, a lot of them were scientists, okay? Even, right. They were Nazis, but they were scientists, Nazi right. scientists. Right. And doctors and, and, and you know they, what I they, mean? they knew about rocketry, and, and so... Yes, and so that's why the U.S. wanted them here. Yeah. Yep, exactly. 
Right. Anyway, speaking of Russia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, no, okay, Grant, wait, 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 wait now. The timing on that, Bo. 1945 was the end of World War II, right? Yeah. So when was the bombing on Hiroshima again? 45? Yeah, see, okay, it wasn't 45, see? Yeah. So they probably used German help on that, creating that, right? Well, no, they didn't need it for that. They, they, they already had... They okay, already... okay, that's what I thought. I'm like, we yeah. gotta... No, the tiny. I was thinking, like, the Ava. I was thinking Nagasaki and Hiroshima bomb. But, right. it, it, no, the Nazi yeah, Operation they, Paper because, was after the war. Right, because they, they didn't need it for those because they dropped them out of an airplane. But what, oh, they, what, okay. what they needed was their rocketry expertise. Oh, okay, yep. So it, that's why NASA was created. Because they, wa- they, wanted, to, they wanted to make the, the intercontinental ballistic missiles. Okay, okay. I, ICBM. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't want to get that. I want to make sure we, I clarified that. <laughs> All right. Anyway, but speaking, clear, speaking, clear, of, I... speaking of Russia, uh, mm-hmm. Russia this week uh, says they now have a good working uh, vaccine that will protect people against killer virus for at least two years. Now, uh, the, the uh, American and other Western uh, media immediately dismissed this, called it nonsense, says it's crazy, but Russia says they got it, and it's out there, and it's working. Uh, two, so... so uh, so, Sorry, Grim, I had to kill a fly. That's all right. So it's two days after Russia stunned the world by announcing it had registered the Sputnik V vaccine against the COVID-19, its developer has revealed that a single dose should protect recipients for a considerable length of time. Of course, as Hal pointed out, protect against what? This stuff doesn't even exist, but that, that's beside the point. <laughs> that's not the narrative of the story. So... <laughs> So, yeah, it'll protect you forever because if there's nothing to protect you against, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, so uh, Alexander Ginsberg, not Ginsberg, Ginsberg, uh, director of the some kind of National Research Center, says the vaccine's protective properties should be intact for at least two years after its administration. Uh, regarding the effective period of the vaccine, its protective properties will at last uh, not just for the short term, such as a half a year, but for at least two years. He told the 60 Minutes show on Russia 1, federal TV channel. I guess they have a 60 Minutes over there, too. Um, <laughs> Russia's healthcare ministry earlier said that previous use of vector vaccines, the class the Gamalala Center uh, product belongs to, shows the immunity is reserved for up to 24 months. So wh- whatever it is they're trying to protect you against, whether it's Corona Bologna or something else, um, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, because you hear fraud, she and Gates and uh, oh, the, the rest these of these morons saying. Saying, saying, not only this, will this stuff only be maybe 30% effective, but it's, it's not going to last very long, maybe two months. So, so keep on coming back right. and, get, and getting more. Uh, this guy, uh, and so as soon as this was put out, of course, all of the Western media, <laughs> oh, no, 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 they're lying, you can't believe, Really? They got a vaccine, and you're not even going to look at it. Your people are dying in mass numbers, if, if as you say. Wow. And, you, and you're not even going to consider their vaccine. Well, wow. uh, does that not reveal your hand? Does that not reveal your hand? Um. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Oh, they're so in, in your face with this, and they're doing this fraud in plain sight, dude. Yeah. And everyone, a lot of, a lot of people are buying into it. Yeah. I mean, the... the <sighs> I know, I know. Uh, All right, we're going to play some more music here. All uh, right, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. That's a good idea. I think so, too. <laughs> All righty. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Yeah. Hope you're having a good day, good night, and have a good weekend. Go get yourself a, a cup of milk for this song. No, uh, oh, milk? Yeah. Anybody like Oreo cookies out there today? All right, that was good stuff right there. A uh, uh, Benoit request, Tyler Childers, and the Food Stamps doing a song called "Messed Up Kid." Thanks for that, there, Ben. Uh, before that, we heard uh, Judas Priest. You've got another thing coming uh, with scenes from the movie Scarface. And we kicked it off with the Miss Kate request there. S R V and Lonnie Mac doing the 
Oreo cookie blues. I hope y'all had your glass of milk handy for that one. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying in the chat, the best Oreos are the double stuff. Just saying. Prove me wrong. Uh, I dare I, you. I, 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 They're the best. I'm just saying. I believe you. I believe you. So we. Why, why do I hear me? Why do I hear me? What? I hear me. You hear you. Oh, shit. Hang on. <laughs> All right. Sorry All right. about that. No problem. I was just wondering why I heard me. Anyway, um, so we're talking about Al Pacino and Scarface. And I just looked him up. Because he is about the same age as Dustin Hoffman, so you kind of I sometimes get the move their movies mixed up or what you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I mean they were big in the 70s, dude. You know. Yeah, yeah. Both those actors were huge in the 70s. And, oh sure. They were, yeah. They were they were in uh, The Godfather, right? Well, Al Pacino was the first one. I'm only looking at L right now, so I'm going to just give you a list, a little, a quick list, not all of his movies, but some of them. And it looks like he was initially on a TV series called NYPD in 1968, um, 1971, The Panic in Needle Park, 1972, which must have been his breakout role because it was Michael Corion in The Godfather. And right. that was 1972. Then he was in a movie called Scarecrow. Then Serpico, which was a huge movie for him. That was like his starring role, his first real right, big. Right, right, Yeah. A, you know, the starring role. In The Godfather, it was a cast of characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just one of the gangsters. Where'd you go? Oh, sorry. I had to do something. I had to open a beer. Oh. Anyway, I didn't want to be too long. <laughs> okay. And then he did another one called Dog Day Afternoon. In oh, well, oh, then yeah. he did Godfather Part 2, played the same role. Then he did Dog Day Afternoon. Right. Which is a very good movie. Now, wait, Ed, tell me tell me if you know this. I, I'm not sure about it. Was mm -hmm. that the movie that John Hinckley um, was referencing when, when he went and shot... Uh, uh, I believe so. Shot uh, Reagan? Who did he shoot? Reagan? Yeah. Reagan. It yeah. was um, an American biographical non-noir, neo-noir crime drama directed by Sidney Lament. Yeah. Lament. Um, plot. It's about a robbery. I don't know. It's been a lot. I movie. saw it. I saw it, but it's been so many years. I don't know. Right, it's been so many. And then he went to The Godfather. Well, he did Bobby Deerfield, which I've never even heard of that movie. Right. Um, Godfather Saga, again. Godfather was huge for him. Yeah, sure. And then he was in Dick Tracy in 1990, which was a total flop, if I remember right. <laughs> it's like, uh, it wasn't really a total yeah. flop for some people, though. Well, that, that, was, that was the Madonna movie, right? Yeah, she was in there, I think. <laughs> then The Godfather Part 3 was 1990, and then Frankie and Johnny in 1991, which that is a really good movie, and that's a different role for him because it's just a totally different role. Like, he's not a bad guy, he's not a gangster, he's not, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then, Donnie, I'm just going to go through a couple of them. Donnie Brasco, Devil's Advocate, which is a very good movie, yeah. 1967. Um, any given Sunday, Insomnia, people I know, the recruit. Insomnia was good. What? Insomnia was a good film. Yep. Uh, Merchant of Venice, which I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, Ocean's Thirteen. You don't know Jack, the son of no one. Jack and Jill, stand up guys. We are not animals. Phil, yeah, he played Phil Spector. Oh yeah. I have not seen that movie. <laughs> I don't think I have but either. But you know, it's going to look like him, you know? Yeah, well, let's get weird hair. <laughs> right. And then, uh, let's see, where I feel so okay. Salome, King Herod, and 20... I have not seen this movie. S-A-L-O-M-E. With like a... Yeah, I don't know it. I don't either. Um, I'll look that one up too. The Humbling, Manglehorn, Denny Collins, Misconduct, The Pirates of Somalia, Hangman, Paterno, which where he played Joe Paterno, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's a good movie. Irish, which is 2019. Okay. Um, Irishman, which is 2019 as well. The Irishman, 
which is about Jimmy Hoffa. He played Jimmy Hoffa in that movie, in that show. It's a Netflix, I think it was a Netflix production. Okay. Um, and then his late, well, he's playing King Lear. Now, I, did, I, did, I, did, I, I didn't hear you mention a movie called Scent of a Woman. What, what was that, he, that was his role, right? He was the guy. Hoo-ha! Yep, Scent of a Woman, 1992. <laughs> I, I remember that. hoo <laughs> Yeah, he, he does that. Good. Yeah, he was great in that movie. I, I, just, I skipped over a couple, Graham. I did. He was in Glenn Deary, Glenn Ross. Yeah, that was a bad movie. Uh, Carlito's Way, which is a really good movie. Heat, which is a really good movie. Oh, yeah. Like City Ball, which is a really good movie. Yeah, I skipped over a couple there. Sorry about that. I should That's have right. went to the list. Cause you... But anyway, good actor. I mean, now we'll look up Dustin Hoffman. Okay. Do, 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 oh, wait, do. wait. What? What? The Jeopardy theme song. Let's see. All right. Oh, let's look up him. He was also a very good actor around the same age as Al. His he started out in 1961 to 63 doing Naked City, which is a TV show. The Defenders, a TV show. The Doctors and Nurses was a TV show, basically a soap opera. Journey of the Fifth Horse, the Star Wagon. We're talking 1966 here. Yeah. Uh, what would you? The Graduate, which one, one of his huge breakout roles was The Graduate, oh, of yeah. course, 1967. Here's to uh, you, Mrs. Robinson. He was, yep, he was young. He was like 19 in that. Uh, let's see here. Midnight Cowboy. Oh, yeah, good one. John and Mary. Don't know that. I don't either. Straw Dogs, 1971. I don't know that one. Sounds vaguely familiar, but... Yeah. Uh, Lenny, Lenny Bruce, he played him in 1974. <laughs> All of President's Men was 1976. Marathon Man, you seen that oh, one? Oh, that's a great film, yeah. Yeah, 1976. Straight Time, Agatha, Kramer vs. Kramer, Tootsie. Tootsie's <laughs> one of my favorite roles. For, I love that movie so uh, much. He right. does so good in that. It's so good. <laughs> it's funny, dude. Okay. And then he did Death of a Salesman, Ishtar, Rain Man, which is what he won like an Oscar for that. Family Business, Earth Day Special, Dick Tracy. He played Mumbles, The Symptoms, Billy Bathgate, Hook. Yep, he was Captain Hook. Um, a Wish for Things at Work, Hero, Outbreak. Sleep oh, Outbreak, that was a great film. Yep, Wade the Dog, Mad City, Spear. The Messenger, The Story of Joan of Arc, that was a great Moonlight film Mile, yeah, King, uh, Liber- Liberty's Kids, ni- or 2002 to 2003, uh, Runaway Jury, Finding Neverland, I Hear Huckabees, Meet the Fockers. Oh my God, I love both that series of movies. <laughs> no, that the was, that was, that oh was my funny. God, what? That was, that was a funny film. Oh yeah, and let's see here, what did I leave off? Uh, Lemony Snicket's a series of unfortunate events, the kids' movie, Racing Stripes, The Lost City, Curb Your Enthusiasm. He played, he was a guest on one episode. Perfume, Stranger Than Fiction, The Holiday, Mr. Majorium's Wonder Emporium, Kung Fu <laughs> Panda, he played a voice in that, Last Chance Harvey, Kung Fu Panda again, Tell Death Row, which is a, a cartoon, I think, because he was just a voice in that. Yeah. Barney's version, King Kung Fu Panda Holiday, Little Fockers, Little Fockers who we didn't see. <laughs> uh, let's see here, what else? And, and you know, he's he's in the labyrinth that I have not seen yet. That was 2019. Anyway, um, just these iconic people, but then you hear all this bad shit about Hollywood, and you know, there's so many good movies out there. But at the same time, you're like, were you a piece of shit? <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, yeah. Were you one of these motherfucking, you know, there's all this shit about Tom Hanks. I don't know what to think about that. So many people get pissed off. If I were to say to some people right now, oh, Tom Hanks is a pedophile, they'd be like, you're out of your fucking mind. You know what I mean? Yeah, well. But it, that's one of those things where it comes down to what you think is, is true or not. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. And it's one of those things you got to do research on, and you can't just make these blind statements. I mean, you can. You can say, oh, no way is he a pedophile. You can say that, but 
are you right? Do you know that? I mean, do you know for sure? I mean, but who does? We don't know these people personally. We don't fucking know. We're not in Hollywood. We're not actors. You know, we're not them. They're in a whole different circle and realm than us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But they are responsible for a lot of the entertainment. And I believe, I know for a fact that Walt Disney wasn't a good dude, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, all the joy he brought to children and all. It's like, do your research before you tell me Walt Disney was a good dude, okay? Right. Because he wasn't. He created a lot of propaganda. There's a lot of sexual imagery in his films. It's been pointed out. It's not a new thing. You know, yeah. Yep, CT stage players on the big screen. Exactly. Yep. But we're so brainwashed, you guys. We're Like, we're so, like, I grew up watching Disney, okay? Mm-hmm. I grew up watching Cinderella and Snow White and Bambi and all that shit, you know? And it was, you don't know, when, when well, you're being programmed. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not, you're, you don't you're, know. you don't know you're being programmed. Sorry, Green, go ahead. You're, you're not old enough to remember, I don't think. But there used to be, I think it was on Sunday nights, uh, it was called a show called The Wonderful World of Disney. Oh, I remember that. Oh, you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was every Sunday night they would put on some kind of thing. And, and, you know, all the kids, they would gather around the TV and watch whatever was on the wonderful world of Disney. We're all all being... It was the world of Disney. It was all maple and all happy and all this and all that. We were all being propagandized into whatever Disney's beliefs were, and we didn't even know it. Exactly. Right. And, yeah, you don't know at that age that that's happening to you, though. Yeah. No, and your and your parents your just parents sit, know better. Right. Your, your parents just sit down in front of the TV and say, "Right, here's our babysitter for the next Wizard couple hours." It was a big deal at our house for some reason. The Wizard of Oz because that came out in like the forties or something. Yeah. And that was a big deal because it was one of the first colorized movies. Oh shit! I think Ox. What? <laughs> ox, ox on the brain. So I picked Ox instead of Oz. 1939. <laughs> okay, one, that's when that movie came out, The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard, think about that movie. The Wizard of Blue Ox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, think about that movie, 1939, and the Depression, just before World War II, right? Or just yeah. uh, during World War II, right? Right, right. I mean, and it was just supposed to be this feel-good fucking movie, you know, make people feel better. But it was a big deal in my house because my, my parents remember that. Sure. They remember it being a big deal. And so, but that's what, it, it, this is a generational thing, Grim. That's, and, how, they, and, 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 that's and, how they treated the whole, oh, your your grandfather was in the military, your father was in the military, so you need to be in the military too. So and if you notice the... Uh, the evil flying monkeys were all dressed like Russians. They were. Yeah. <laughs> there's so much pro- Why do you think Pink Floyd wrote Dark Side of the Moon? It coincides with the Wizard of Oz, people. Well, In I case don't... you guys didn't know that, you can, you can look it up. It's a proven thing. Yeah, you well, there's... start the Wizard of Oz, at the same time you're playing, you start the record, Dark Side of the Moon, it coincides with the movie. It's, it's on YouTube as a video. Yeah. The, the, it coincides the, with, yes. Yeah. But, anyway. <laughs> I would suggest maybe do an LSD or acid. At least smoke weed when you watch it. Because, I mean. Or just as, as, as an everyday it, thing. Just as an everyday thing. Right. It's trippy, dude. Like, the Dark Side <laughs> of the Moon coincides with the movie The Wizard of Oz. Like, yeah. it's a thing. Right. Sure, you're, sure. You're, 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 this has been years since I've heard about it. That people don't talk about it really. You know what I mean? Right. Right. It's just so old. It's like everyone's like, "Oh yeah, no shit." You know what I mean? Right. Everybody that knows about it has already watched the video, or you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's trippy as hell, dude. I mean, those guys. I'm sorry. I gotta say, Pink Floyd is one of the ever, best ever bands ever. When right. it comes to rock and roll. When it comes to lyricism and just music, musicianship, I mean, those dudes are talented, dude. Yeah. Those dudes are talented. I'm saying they're the whole deal. They write they write their own stuff. They play their own stuff. They're, oh, thanks for posting that. Sure. Yeah, it's one hour and 41 minutes, but 
Dude, it's it's crazy how it, it, it coincides and I think have they actually said that they did that green or is that No, I, I no, I don't I don't think they said they did that. I I don't recall or, They I haven't mean, come out and publicly said, Yeah, we did I, that. I, I, don't, I, I don't remember know. any kind of uh interview by <laughs> Roger Waters or anybody. But it's crazy how it matches up, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean it's trippy, yeah. Sure. But anyway, I don't know why I got started talking about entertainment and stuff like that, but um I'm so sick of talking about all this fucking crazy fucking shit that's going on. You well, know, then you're out. not then you're then you're not gonna like this next article. Oh, well, that's okay. I, I at least I got a little bit of a chance to talk about something besides COVID and the economy <laughs> and all this politics and government. Well, <sighs> yeah, uh, and, while, and, and while and while this um, is about COVID, it's not. It's more about the people that surround okay. you. Okay. This is posted on redpilluniversity.org by G. Edward Griffin. Okay. Oh, I like G. Edward Griffin. Yeah, me too. Yeah. He's good. He's a great, yeah, he's very excellent. I love him. I like him a lot. The sleeping masses are dragging us into hell. What can we do? And it's kind of brief, but here it is. Uh, this look into the future by Max Egan will disturb you to the core. It shows how gruesome life may become in the near future because of a pandemic that does not exist. Everything of value in our lives will be negatively impacted, especially the end of personal freedom and the arrival of a new money system designed to integrate with the social course score system, uh, social score system like they have in China, uh, or that you might have seen in the Black uh, Black Mirror show. Um, such as now is used in communist China. Unfortunately, Max does not show us a way out, but he makes us realize that if the masses continue to fall for the pandemic ploy, the rest of us will be swept along with them. The great value of this video, and there's a video embedded here that you can watch, there, there, therefore is to sharpen our vision for a winning strategy. If the masses will drag us into slavery with them, our plan becomes clear. We must all apply, or we must apply all of our present efforts and financial resources to those projects and activities that offer the best chance of reaching the masses with the truth. If we fail to do that, nothing else matters. Thank you, Max, for making that point clear. This was uh, August 3rd he put this out. It's a, like a 10-minute video here that, that's embedded into this post. So uh, I think it's worth people's time watching that. What can be done? Uh, like he says, you can put all your time and efforts and try to reveal the truth to people. But as we've seen here in the RLM chat, it doesn't matter. They don't want to hear it. They won't hear it. They, they'll absolutely uh, just just balk at any 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 kind of truth you put out there uh, because it doesn't. They they want the current agenda that's being fed to them uh, by by the corporate lame ass propaganda yep. machine. That, that's yep. what they, that's what they want. They want the yes, clap. they do. They want the clap story, right? And that's that. And that's the beginning and end of that. Yeah, um, G. Edward Griffin is a really smart. He wrote that book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. That's one of his publications. Um, yeah. I would definitely, if you don't know about the creation of the Federal Reserve, um, I would suggest learning about it because that's what. It, it, they're they're destroying it. Like it's been destroyed for a while, but I mean I mean not the Federal Reserve, but the, the economy. Yeah. And it, it's behind. The, this is how we got to this point. The creation of this of that central bank by rich motherfuckers that don't give a fuck about you or me. Never did or your family members. This is back in 1913. Okay, that this took place. Right. And it was on Christmas Eve, or near the day before Christmas Eve, or something like that. All these rich motherfuckers went down to Jekyll Island and created the central bank, and that's why we, we're at where we're at right now, still today. Right. And how many years is that? I mean, come on. A lot. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of generations. A lot of fucking um, lives lost. With all these wars, Vietnam, 
You know, World yeah. War II, World War One. I. I mean, it's all for them to make more money. Yep. It, if you guys don't see that, I don't know what it's going to take. I, and I would, how you trust these people, I do not know. I do not know. Okay. I, now, I can't understand that, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Each to their own. You know, you're entitled to whatever you think you want to think, you know, you're, whatever. Right. Now, now Just don't try to fucking force your shit onto me and act like I'm some kind of bad person because I don't think exactly like you do. Exactly. You know, that, that bugs me. That That's like so dumb. That's like junior high school crap. Right. So, now, now, you uh, know, um, Hal talks about it all the time. Uh, there is no test, right? Right. He talks about this all the time, yeah. Okay. Well, here's here's what the CDC says about the test. Okay. CDC admits COVID nine positive COVID nineteen positive result just means you've previously contracted the common cold. So if you've ever had a cold, which right, means, which means everybody, um, right, everybody's had a cold. That means you can test kind of you, immortal or something. You you can test positive uh, for for <laughs> for the freaking COVID. This is on. Uh, uh, Intellihub.com posted on July 7th. Uh, so a positive result means that you have antibodies from an infection with a virus from the same family of virus viruses called coronaviruses, such as the one that causes the common cold. <laughs> and what can only be considered a pre-orchestrated, top-down, worldwide pyramid scheme also involving the Executive Office of the President of the United States, Trump, Dr. Anthony Fraudji, Bill Gates, and others who've defra <laughs> defrauded the American people yet once again after it has been revealed the CDC that a positive uh, COVID-19 test re re merely shows yeah. that the test E, not test E's, the test E, right. uh, was once infected with the common cold and yeah. nothing more. Right. Common cold. Okay, so... In, okay, let's just do, I'll just do a real, I'll share this, I'll share this. I don't care. All right, IntelliHub founder and editor. Oh, sorry, I thought you were done. That's sorry. all right, that's all right, I'll, I'll go a little bit more here. No, go uh, ahead. IntelliHub no. founder and editor-in-chief Shepard Ambellis tweeted out the details on Tuesday, which ultimately unveils the sinister plan that's currently afoot in regards to the unconstitutional closures, shutdowns, lockdowns, forced testing, contact tracing, and complete dismantlement of society as we know it. Uh, and his tweet was, CDC admits COVID-19 tests only for the common cold. Y'all motherfuckers have been duped. Real Donald Trump is in bed with Dr. Fauci and Bill Gates. They will track and eventually vaccinate you. You are sheep if you allow it. The resistance. So the uh, that, I mean, that, that's really the, the core of what's here. There's a lot more information in the article. But, uh, yeah, yeah, fraudgy, man. Uh, that guy. Whew. So, uh. Uh, okay. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So if you if you if you get tested and you come back with positive, uh, or if you don't get, or if you don't get tested and they call you, I mean, you, you had a cold at some point in your yeah. life. Yeah, you, you had a cold. You had a cold. So freak out, freak out now. Yeah, freak out. Oh no, I'm positive. Oh. So, so I love the story that we told a couple week ago or a couple weeks ago. Uh, about the people that were waiting in line to get tested, and they said, fuck this, we're leaving because it was taking too long. Yep. And then you get called saying they were tested positive. Yeah. And they left before they were tested in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. So what I was going to say is my son works up this warehouse where they load and unload trucks. They get He works at a general, it's called, it, 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 it's a beer warehouse, you know. Okay. Remember, you know what I mean. They get pallets ready for the stores and shit. You know, they do all kinds of stuff. Load trucks, do it, whatever. Don't matter. Anyway, um, they, uh, the supervisor tested positive, quote unquote, for Corona. Okay. And it, Zach, I saw my son today and he's like, uh, yeah, my supervisor tested positive. I'm like, well, what did you guys do? He's like, oh, we just told me to keep our distance. 
right. He came in at work sick. He wasn't feeling well. Right when he came in, he said, you know what I mean? Right. Well, then he went and got tested. And he's supposedly positive. So now he's like quarantined. So now I don't know if they're, I, I might be contacted. Do you know what I'm saying? Even though Zach doesn't live with me right now. I might, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I'm like, Zach, maybe you should go get tested as that, you know, cause I, I, but I'm like, we were, I was looked at him. I just shrugged my shoulders. I didn't know what the fuck. I'm like, yeah. I don't know what to think. Dude. I don't well, know. I'm I, like, I, he's, he's, he's 20, right? He's 20. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you know, if, if he, if he catches a cold, no big deal. Right. He'll yeah. get over it. He's a healthy kid. He has no underlying health problems. Yep. I mean, and so it's kind of because I was like, I let him come here today. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't fucking give a shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't believe in this shit. It's like, you know, right. I just, I think that these positives, like you say, Graham, they're positive for something, but not for what they're saying. Uh, if, if it's, I mean, you know, if, well, it, you, I, if they're positive for something, then, then how are people that never even had the test being positive? Right. Yeah, so. And I mean, so he wasn't feeling well, he said, but Zach didn't say, like, what was his problem? Maybe he just came into work and wanted to get out of work. Yeah, that's possible, too. And then he goes <laughs> and gets a test for COVID, and it's positive, then he's out for 14 days, you know? How convenient. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure, I mean, sure. I just think there's false positives. I don't trust their test. Quote unquote, you know, like right. Cal says, you can't test for this shit. Right, there is no test. There is no test. test. For it. So what are they doing? What is this <laughs> test that they're doing? What is it? Is it giving you the virus? Uh, is it making you sick? It, I, I, it, uh, it could well be giving you the virus. If we there, said that if, at the beginning when this first came out too, yeah. If there even is a virus. <laughs> right. I mean, we don't even. I mean, from what that article you just read, it's if you do. Get the test. You're testing hot if you test positive, but then a grip that kind of blows out of the water, Graham. Because what about the ones that are negative? Well, Everyone's had a fucking cold, dude. Uh, you know, maybe it goes away after in some people. I don't know. I don't know either. You know, but well, here's what I know. We're gonna, the, here, here's what I do know. We're gonna play some music. Okay. All right, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> um. This stuff is. This is just so crazy. Oh. Uh, I, it's just just. Weird as fuck. It's like the Twilight fucking zone or something. I don't fucking know. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Here we go. People. We'll be back. We'll we be back. We will. We will. Oh, yeah. That's some nice stuff right there for y'all. <laughs> Scorpions, the zoo. Uh, the video is a bevy of babes there for y'all. Before that, we had uh, Steve Earle doing Guitar Town there. Uh, you're talking about his 1935 Martin D28. Yeah. Uh, and we kicked it off with a Hansel request there. Manfred, Man, Manfred Mann. Do -a -de 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 -de. Anyway, from uh, 1964. I, I didn't even realize Manfred Mann was around in 1964. Yeah. Right I know, right? <laughs> and that song? They did that song? Yeah. Oh, he must have found that in some obscure place. I don't know, but that was really cool. Yeah. And then um the TNA segment, I hope you all enjoyed that. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I love I, that song though. Oh the yeah. By the Scorpions. Scorpions. That is an awesome tune, dude. Now, that it, is one of the best I mean, classic from the eighties. In your face, freaking just you know what I mean? I love that song, the zoo. That's such a good tune. Yeah, well from what I from from what I understand from what I understand the uh, <laughs> From what I understand, because I got high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got high. Uh, anyway, from, I got what high. I, from what I <laughs> sorry, from what I understand, the uh, Scorpions are uh, uh, doing like a comeback tour. They're, they're gonna yeah, put they're out old, a, they're ancient, but hey, you they're know gonna, they're, they're gonna, still rocking. They're gonna, they're gonna put out a, a new uh, a new album. Uh, so what the hell? Yeah, you know, if Steven Tyler and Mick Jagger can do it, what the fuck, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can still rock and roll, like, think about, like, old blues guys, like B.B. King. Let's just use him. I mean, they don't care. They, they want to die on stage while they're playing blues music. Sure. I mean, to them, that's like Valhalla or Nirvana or something, right, Graham? I mean, 
some of these old timers, they don't ever want to stop playing music. No, they, they die with a uh, guitar in their hand, you know. Yeah, you know, and I just, I am not a musician. I'm kind of a singer and a dance. I'm a dancer, but um, I just give so much props to these guys that can just, you know, do what they do. I mean, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on when you're talking about rock and roll. Right. You know, I mean, you'd have to write a fucking billion page fucking book to cover all the everything. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. The British invasion, the 60s era, the, you know what I mean? And a lot of people don't realize that if it wasn't for the blues, rock and roll wouldn't exist, dude. Like, even Clyde was talking the other night on his show, like, um, Americana music, like, such as the blues and jazz, is what created rock and roll. And also, the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, all those big bands, they covered old blues songs. They made them into a rock and roll song. Right. Like, a lot of people don't realize how many songs well, they, they that didn't, happened with, you they know? Didn't, they didn't realize they were actually listening to the blues. Exactly. They're like, oh, they didn't know this is a rock song because the Stones made it into a rock song, but it was actually an old blues song well, even the that Stones, got made into it. Was the Stones and Zeppelin and uh, uh, those bands, the Who, whoever? They when they played the blues songs, they played them as blues songs, and they, I mean, they weren't necessarily. Right. Yeah, they didn't people make them didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's just like. um I mean, if you if Led Zeppelin played any blues song, I don't know, uh, The Thrill is Gone, it wouldn't sound the same as B.B. King's version. No, but, <laughs> but I mean, the, the Zeppelin had a lot of blues. Because know? you got Jimmy Page, that motherfucking awesome guitar player that's one of the best in the world, and these guys are just going to fucking rock the fuck out of it, right? Well, yeah, but I, but I mean, they played some pure blues stuff too. I mean, right? Go, go they in, did. Oh, definitely, they did. Uh, oh, Days and Confused. Go into California. That, that's that's pure, but that's that's, a, that's not a cover though. Days and no, Confused. No, no, but right? it's pure, but it's a pure like, blues track. Right. Exactly. I mean. Right. What was the album? What one? Uh, going to California. I think it was, was on? on two. I think it was on and two. Was, Might have been on one. Was just, okay, I don't know. But. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, right. I mean, uh, you know, the Yardbirds, they were they were blues. And that, that's where Zepp yeah. came from. Um, uh, I mean, a lot of that stuff was. And the Who, they played a lot. And uh, of course, right. the, of course, the Stones played a lot of blues. Beatles, oh, the Beatles, time. Beatles even did blues. Who? Uh, the Beatles. Oh, the Beatles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. yeah. So the Kinks, they did some blues. and Oh, God, I love the Kinks. <laughs> I love the Kinks so much. <laughs> the Doors. One of my favorite songs is the Sunday Afternoon. That's yeah, yeah, the best you one. know, the, the Doors did a lot of blues. The Doors, oh, my God. Morrison was really deep, dude. Oh, yeah. He was deep, so. and his dad was a higher up in the military. He was a fucking general in the Navy or something. You know, Deep Purple didn't do a lot of blues, but a lot of, no. their, a lot of their stuff was blues-based, so... Um, yeah, I mean, it, you guys, if you don't know, the, I mean, even Elvis Presley. Oh, sure. He started out singing in his church, dude. Oh, yeah, he's a gospel dude. And he, it was a black church, though. Yeah. Gospel. And he was one of the few white boys in the black church, and that's how he learned to sing how he did, and, and to move his body like he did. Yeah. That's, he learned that at a very young age, and he, they were very poor growing up, and he was actually, a, he's actually a twin. The twin died, like... In the middle of the pregnancy or something, something like that, or maybe he didn't. Maybe it was actually born, stillborn. But there is this because there is like I believe a grave site. I'm not sure on that, but Elvis was a twin, right? And um, a lot of people don't know that, but he grew up in the spirit. I mean, a lot of these guys, these blues guys, especially, they grew up. It was gospel music or it was slave music turned into the blues. Yeah. Too, you know what I mean? Like Robert Johnson. Sure. That was that's like raw. Very if you, raw. If yeah. you want to know like the origins of the blues, listen to you some Robert Johnson because yeah. you'll feel you'll feel it. 
You can feel his pain. You well, can feel a, a his lot, a lot of a lot of his songs. Every every everybody's done the Crossroad Blues. Uh, yeah, even Eric Clapton, that still to this exactly. day, does his Crossroads Music Festival, and, and yep, it all comes exactly. from from Robert Johnson's Crossroad Blues, where yep. he went, where he went down to the Crossroad and signed a deal with the devil. Uh, yep. To, <laughs> to get that. Yeah. I, oh my God, Robert Johnson. Yeah. Anyway, that moves, if that's what music doesn't move you, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. You have, <laughs> you, you have no. You have no soul. Uh, right. A, yeah. Anyway, uh, a couple quick hitter stories here. Okay. Uh, just just to get them in, um, because I, I saw I came across this earlier this week and it's like, what the hell's going on here? And, and I, <laughs> I I don't know, but uh, this is. Oh, about I think I know. Okay, go ahead. AfricanElephantJournal dot com. The sudden death of hundreds of elephants in Botswana stays a mystery, even after new test results. So about 400 elephants have dropped dead in Botswana since early May. Nobody knows why. Tests ordered by Botswana's government and laboratories in South Africa and Zimbabwe have proved inconclusive. Pesticides, agrochemicals, and pathogens as possible reasons for the unexplained deaths of the world's biggest land animals have been ruled out, a government statement said. Uh, Botswana is home to Africa's largest elephant population of 130,000. So there, there's uh, that's just the, the bullet points, but there's a lot of details here. And it's very weird that these elephants... I can't... I, I really have a hard time with this, Grandma, because I, what is, what's causing it? Like, they is they it don't heat? know. Is it something like... I mean... They thought maybe poachers and poisoning, but no. We need these, we need these creatures on this planet. Yeah, so it's weird anyway. We need them, dude. They're so... Beneficial to this planet. Uh, they I are, but, it just uh, bums me out so much. I I, I don't if, know. I, I couldn't even look at the article for like less, over like ten seconds. I had to click it off. I, I it bums me out so much. I I couldn't look at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, if at some point in the future they come up with something and I find <sighs> it, I'll let you guys know. But it's very I weird. I hope so. It's very weird. What, what very the hell weird. Very weird. And they're mammals. Yep. All right, they give and, uh, birth like we do. They, they're they mammals. Dude. I'm just going to quickly give you the title to this one here. Okay. okay. Um, In-ear nerve-stimulating device helps people learn a new language. So you might want to read through this if you're interested in learning a new language. Um, it's, a wow. cool, it's a cool device. Uh, so uh, it's just, hmm. just, just something, you know, I, 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 I don't know what the hell it is or what's causing it or whatever, but... Uh, mm-hmm. I, I mean, or, or, or how it works, what's causing it. Nothing's causing it. The thing is causing it, obviously. Um, <laughs> Nothing's causing No, no, no. All right. Anyway, so let's, uh, I got to, yep. just got to close out here. Uh, All right. So uh, here we go. Roll another. Roll back with it, family. Uh, that's a guy named uh, Kenneth William Elkington uh, playing his uh, Black Betty on his uh, banjo. For that, the Moose Girl request there, Afro Man, because I got high. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up here for the Freakers Ball for another week. We'll be back again next week. Don't you worry about a thing. Uh, so, y'all, have a great yeah. week, a great weekend. Uh, yeah. And uh, stay away from the, uh, well, everybody. Um, the riffraff. <laughs> the riffraff. <laughs> <laughs> the COVIDs. The COVIDiots. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. So uh, tomorrow. Have a good one, Graham. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. It's been great. It's been a fun show. Yeah, check out the Dork Table tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern right here on RLM Radio. And I'll yep. be on Sunday morning. Uh, with the blues at my normal time, noon Eastern. And we're always here in the chat room. I mean, yeah, you we're always ask here. Ask us questions during the week or any time. Yep, yep. Come on in. the RLM chat room and Rock it we're usually in. there. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there's somebody in there chatting, whether it's me or usually, not, right. Moose or not. You know, there'll be somebody in there. Yep. I mean, wow. it's always active. It's not just during the show times. It's it's 24-7 chat room. It's an IRC uh, chat 
So yep. welcome to the newcomers. Absolutely. So uh, we'll thanks talk. for tuning in. You, you guys are awesome. Yep, yep, yep. Peace. All right. Peace.